Welcome to the Catamount Football Show with Coach Matt Land. I'm Bill Mayo. And on this week's show, we're going to take a look back at the Cass game. Also talk about the upcoming sub-region game with Ridgeland. Uh, so stay right here. We'll be back with more Catamount Football in just a minute. Got car problems? That's no problem for AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. Bring your foreigner domestic vehicle into AAA Transformers and have our certified master technicians perform the most comprehensive diagnostics over any other shop. AAA Transformers utilizes the latest technology so you can rest assured that you get the proper diagnosis the first time so only necessary repairs are made. Save time and money on all your brake, AC, tune-up, and transmission needs. All backed by the best warranty in the business. That's AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. When is the last time you have compared your car, life, or health insurance costs? At Advanced Insurance Strategies, we know your time is valuable. Therefore, we have developed AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. You can now go online anytime, anywhere, and get quick and easy quotes for your car, life, or health insurance from respected companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, Assurant Health, Alliant Health Plans, and Drive Insurance from Progressive. Receive unparalleled customer service from a local insurance agency while using AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. Welcome back to Catamount Football. I got Coach Land and Coach. You know, there's not a lot of a lot of nice words we can say about last yeah, Friday night not. against there's Cass. Not. It's just one of those games that um, was ugly from from start to finish. I mean, you look at the opening kickoff. We kick the ball in the end zone. Uh, Going to start them at the 20 yard line. Have a penalty. All of a sudden, they go from the 20 to about the 45. So 25 yards of yeah. of uh, field position, and it just kind of went downhill from there. Talk, talk about your perspective. Well, you're right. The one thing I don't want to do for our team, and I don't want to do for ourselves, is take away the fact that this was a very, very good football team. Though that we played, I know that we think about Cass as being an 0 10 team, and 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 you know of last year and. And, uh, you know, and they've not been a very good team in the past. I think anyone that came to the game and watched first and foremost uh, is the fact that this was a very, very talented football team. Uh, we said at quarterback club meeting the other night, they were going to be dangerous offensively because you had basically about four guys that looked just alike. Six foot, six foot one, you know, 170 pounds that can run, catch, and jump. Uh, so, you know, you, you had skill in those positions, real quick back, good size line and probably one of the best quarterbacks that we would play. And I, I don't think he disappointed he disappointed us, That's but right. he didn't disappoint their fans. Uh, defensively, it was just a it's, a it's a different scheme. Even though we've played a three-man front, it's the first really true 3-4, kind of 3-5 hybrid that we'd seen all year. So with that being the case, there were some challenges going into the game for us as a team. And on top of that, I thought, you know, Coach Casco, as I've said before, uh, is, is a fine coach. Uh, so he had their guys ready to play. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a tough game. You know, there, there was, we will look back on that game. And, and, you know, even though it feels like it was a dominated game, and it was, I don't want to take that away, I think as coaches, we, when we begin to break down the film, you go back, and, and the, the opening kickoff is a perfect example. You go from a ball kicked in the, in the goal line, uh, you know, and ball comes out to the 20, to now suddenly, you know, because we're off sides, uh, we're now coming around, and, and it's basically a 29-yard game because right. now the ball comes out to almost the 49-yard line. So it was those types of plays throughout the night. And, you know, I, my hat's off to Cass. As I said, I think they played really hard. Their kids they had a great game plan for us, uh, nothing that we would not seen before. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, this is one we're going to look back on, and I think we're all going to kind of uh, get in the film, and we're going to learn a lot from this. We're going to take it forward. And now that we start our sub-region play, I, I hope this is something that we're going to use to help us going forward. You know, I think one thing, too, that there, there's um, – when you look at a football game, whether it's a win or a loss, but particularly a loss like this, uh, it wasn't so much X's and O's. It, it, it was one of these mo – really a, moment, a momentum thing. Yeah. And, and I, we were talking the other day, it felt like you were – there was a snowball rolling downhill and it would just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and, and there wasn't anything, you know, that, that we could do to, to stop the snowball going down the hill. Talk about the, the momentum thing because it wasn't like they were just physically lining up and, you know, mashing us off the football or, or yeah. outrunning us or, or, you know, just swarming our offense. It, right. it was just kind of just one bad thing after – little things yeah. after another yeah. and, they, yeah. and they just piled up quickly. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's something <laughs> that as you, as you go back and, I mean, I know – I know as a staff, we were in the film room Saturday morning breaking down film, and we've probably watched it 15 to 20 times. And I think what it goes to show is the importance of 11 people playing together. And, you know, and you look at every play, and, you know, we'll, we'll continue to show, we'll show the kids this, how, you know, one guy not being in that right place, one guy not, 
you know, when everybody blocks down, that one guy blocking out instead of blocking down, uh, you know, on a kickoff return, you know, you, you got a kickoff return set up that, that could potentially go for a return, and we, we let one guy slip mm -hmm. through. And, you know, there, there's reasons why. I mean, we'll look back at that. You know, it, there's, there's not a doubt in my mind as we, as we talk to the kids about, you know, it's, there's not a doubt in my mind that we all went into the game, coaches, players, fans, and everyone, everyone wanted to win that game. And, and, you know, we look at that and we know that there's so many things that we'll, like I said, we'll look at, but it was never, you're right, it wasn't an X's and O's thing. It, it wasn't an effort thing. I want to say that. The kids played hard. I mean, we, we went back and looked at the film, and, and, I mean, there are some kids that probably played as hard as they've played all year long. So, you know, it, it wasn't that. I just think it was one of those things, it's kind of like a cake. You just start getting a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and suddenly it makes that big small uh, you know, snowball uh, that starts rolling. And, and then, you, then you get into a position, particularly late in the game, where you've now got to get out of yourself. You've got to get out of what you do in order to try to, to, to accommodate a score, and suddenly you become a team that you're not. So with that being the case, you know, they, they, once they got us to that point, it's like wrestling with your brother and waiting for, you know, somebody's got to say uncle. And they had us at that point. And, and, you know, the kids continue to fight. The coaches continue to fight. You know, the fans was, was yelling, but it was just a little too little too late. Absolutely. Well, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with more Catamount football in just a minute. AstroTurf is grateful to have been a part of this community over the last 40 years. And as Whitfield County has grown, AstroTurf has grown to be the leader worldwide in synthetic sports surfaces. Our assistance with the area parks and the new AstroTurf arena will hopefully show the community our appreciation. Soft, safe, and the most durable technology available today, AstroTurf, it's the new generation. This is not your father's AstroTurf. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show. We've got our key players of the game segment. Guys, welcome to the show and introduce yourselves, please. I'm Ethan Marlowe, play defensive tackle, number 81, senior. I'm Will Irwin, I'm a senior this year, and I play tight end. All right, Ethan, let's start with you. Now, tell me about your, uh, uh, your role on the defensive line. Because you said defensive tackle, but you actually bounce around to some different spots out there, don't you? Yes, sir. I play defensive end and defensive tackle, nose guard, anywhere they need me. Uh, Pretty much your job is to keep them off the linebackers, squeeze them down, don't let them block our linebackers where they can make tackles. Now you make that sound pretty easy, but there's some differences in playing outside versus playing inside and the types of blocks you face and the types of people that are blocking you. Talk, talk about those uh, differences a little bit and how you handle those adjustments during the course of the game. As an inside guy, you uh, get more double teams and more pulling guards and stuff, so you really have to read it a lot better. And when you get double teams, you have to get down and. As a defensive end, you really just have to squeeze down and just contain everything. Mm -hmm. And some some of the teams we play do an awful lot of double teaming, so that's a, that's a big big responsibility. Yes, that's a challenge for you sometimes. Isn't it? I mean, for any defensive lineman, when those mm -hmm. guys, when you got uh, guard and a tackle or center and guard and coming after you, right? Yes, sir. Well, t um, now talk a little bit about <clears throat> obviously last Friday night tough game, um, but going forward, we've got the getting ready to start subregion play. Talk about. Uh, your goals for that and, and getting prepared for uh, this week's game against Ridgeland. It's a new season. We have to come out and just win every game. And if we win every game, we'll go to the playoffs. So. Yeah. How about how about goals? Go, I, I know for the team, obviously, we, we want to move forward through the region schedule. How about goals for yourself? What do you want to accomplish the rest of the season? I just want to be the best team player and uh, just have the whole team come together and win. Talk about plans after after high school. What do you, what do you, what would you like to do? Go to college and uh, I hope to go to pharmacy school and get a degree and go to a pharmacy. Long long hard road ahead with that one in there. Yes, sir. But still a lot of football left to play. Well, thanks for coming to the show. Yes, you're, you're doing a great job. Thank you. All right, Will. Now let's talk to you. Now tell me you're you're a senior as well and and talk a little bit about uh, your role in the team as a, as a tight end. Uh, definitely trying to step up and be a leader this year. Kind of carry the offensive line because. 
It's only one other senior that starts on the line, and uh, he does a great job of leading too. But uh, I just like kind of like to help him out a little bit. And in kind of, your position, you're kind of a a hybrid guy. You've got to go hang out with the receivers and the quarterback sometimes, but then you spend a lot of time with us on the offensive line. Talk about that 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 transition because you're expected to block, but also expected to catch. Uh, well, I can do a little bit of both, and it's not hard to adjust. K kind of a kind of a. Uh, but two hats you have to wear. I mean, because you spend time doing mm -hmm. seven on seven outside drills, that kind of thing, and then but you've got to come down and go through the shoots and hit the sled, and so it's a it's a uh, uh, an interesting position that a tight end has to has to take. How about the 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 blocking side of it? We see a lot of different defensive fronts, and there, there's a talk about the mental aspect that goes on uh, as an, as an offensive lineman, what you have to understand and what you have to know. Oh, well, you definitely have to pick up blitzes and. Uh, and rip recognize stacks and linebackers walked up because it's, sometimes it's two different completely blocks but they can be in the same position and uh, it's just it's confusing but once you get used to it is a uh, it kind of clicks communication is a big part of, of uh, football in general but also playing offensive line talk about that aspect the communication between the quarterback and you guys and getting the play call but also uh, you guys up front making line calls and, and making sure everybody's on the same page well, uh, sometimes our quarterback has to check down to a different play if the safety's moved over, or uh, I always have to communicate with our offensive tackle to let them know when I'm releasing on a pass route or uh, when I'm staying in the block. So that's a little bit about communication. How about getting ready for the? How about getting ready for the rest of the the season and got the sub region getting ready to come up? Talk about that a little bit and, and what you guys what you want to get accomplished uh, for the second half of the season here. Uh, I think we definitely need to eliminate the penalties and maybe the big plays that we give up or uh, the big plays that we don't make happen on offense. I think that's definitely somewhere we can improve on and uh, and also our passing game and covering the pass on both sides of the ball is somewhere I think we can improve for the rest of the season. All right, well guys, thanks a lot for uh, coming on the show. Certainly appreciate everything you guys do for the Catamounts and, and good luck uh, with the rest of the season. Thank you. All right, stay so right here back with more Catamount football in just a minute. Wood, 299. Wood, 159. Set. Mike Jones here, and you better bliss to Carpet Express. We have three quarter inch hardwood for $2.99 a square foot. We have engineered wood for $1.59 a square foot. And to help you reach your goal to put wood in your home, Carpet Express is offering a 25 cent a square foot rebate. So rush into Carpet Express while supplies last, because everybody's out to get their quarterback. Have you ever heard the term, your eyes are your expressions, the windows to your soul? But when your eyelids look tired and they start to sag, it will make you look much older than you actually are. There is a simple surgical procedure called a blepharoplasty or eyelid tuck, which can help to rejuvenate and redefine the contours around your eyelids. It will even improve your fields of vision and a portion may even be covered by insurance. We can help redefine how others see you. Welcome back to Catamount Football. We've got a special guest this week. We've got Randall Davidson, who's been the voice of the Catamounts for 18 seasons, correct? 18 years. 18 you and years. I were partnered together for about nine or 10 of those yes, years we were. on the radio. Had a lot of fun doing color with you. And, um, you know, I think you've kind of established yourself as, as the voice of the Catamounts over all these years. And, and certainly everybody appreciates the job you guys do on Friday night. And all that time with Dalton football has led to a project. Yes. That, that you have you talked about. I remember you talking about it years ago. You and I talking about it, and kind of kind of pick it up and and explain how this thing progressed and, and where it is now. Well, obviously, when I got to Dalton, I, my knowledge of Dalton football was almost zero. This is really before the internet takes off, so you couldn't really look things up. There wasn't the Historians Association website, and I started going up to Dalton State College just to pull up something to be conversational about it because it's so important in the community and the people who grew up here know it, it's in their DNA. And I started making copies of stuff on microfilm from papers in the past and keeping files. And this happened over the course of a few years. And about 10 or 11 years ago, right around the time that uh, Coach McClurg became the head coach, I started looking back, I wanted to find the history, just when it started, because I couldn't find that out. 
and I went back and back and back and back and finally landed in 1924. <laughs> and I started making copies of that. And I remember talking to you about this about mm -hmm. 10 years ago. I would just spend hours, and I've always been around colleges, so research is no big deal. And I said, you know, there's some interesting stories here. There's some really neat stuff. And at some point, I think I might want to make a book out of all this. And it's just really developed over the course of the last several years. And um, it, it, it came to a, a head in the last year and a half or so. It got really serious, and I was trying to fill in blanks and find things that I didn't have. And ultimately, it became this. Uh, this is volume one, Catamount's Glorious History of Dalton Football. Uh, just, in fact, was printed this week. So we sold them at the football game on Friday night, and I've had an incredible response. Oh, that's great. Now, and talk about, this is volume one, so obviously volume two is coming. So kind of talk about the years that volume one covers and, and uh, how far back do we go, or how far forward do we go with that one? Volume one goes from 1924 to 1969. It was only two months ago that I decided to split it into volumes. It was already in the 200 page range, still adding photographs, still adding research. And I started realizing that it was gonna be a five, 600 page tome by the time you got through <laughs> with this. It was like, wow, because yeah, the, the 20s, there's only so much about it. The right. 30s, there's only so much. You've got a few good pictures and then you didn't even play two years. The season sometimes were only seven games. So there's not that much information. But as you move forward, especially through the 50s and into the 60s, you've got a lot more games. The team's reaching the playoffs, reaching state championship games. So you're going from eight, nine, 10 games a year to 12, 13. More photographic you know, memories that you want to put in there. And what you end up with, you can re see as you, every decade is getting longer. Talk about how you, how you pull those lists together of, of the players. I thought that was very interesting. That was something that I started tackling about three or four years ago. And honestly, the writing had to hold off until I got that list, because once you start working on a list like that, you get obsessive with it. Right. <laughs> and I'm not going to miss anybody. You would find last names and not first names. If you go back to sports writing in the 20s and 30s, and I've even found this on the collegiate level, they didn't put in first names. You would have a lineup, and it would just be these 11 guys, and it was all last names. So I would have to go back and try to find first names. Um, I spent a lot of time at the, uh, at the Dalton Education uh, downtown with Craig Harper going through old records trying to see, okay, who was Johnson in 27? Well, there might be three Johnsons. Okay, let's look at his transcript and see what year he graduated, if he graduated. Uh, there was just so many little things like that to put together. As you go forward, you get team photos. As right. the team goes forward, and then it gets a little bit easier. Absolutely. And you end up going and you've got a triple way to check it. So I'm pretty sure I've got everybody past a certain point. Once you go back to the 20s or 30s, I got everybody I possibly could. Absolutely. Well, real quick before we wrap up here, when will volume two be out? This time next year. This time next year. So pick up volume one. Great yes. Christmas present. Yes. Great Halloween present. Great uh, Thanksgiving present for anybody, right? That's right. Pick it up and, and they can get it at the game. And uh, where else? They can get it at the game. There's uh, information on DaltonFootball.com. Obviously, I'm at the high school five days a week and I've had people calling and driving by there. I've delivered some already. All right. And I, and I certainly don't mind doing that. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. We appreciate everything you do for Dalton football. And it uh, wouldn't be the same without you guys calling the games on Friday night. Thank you, Bill. Stay right here. Be back with more Dalton football in just a minute. No, no problem with the deadline. Yeah, our internet service connection flies now that we have OptiLink. You're the star with OptiLink from Dalton Utilities. Local customer service, lightning fast internet, stellar phone and television at affordable rates. I'd like to thank Mike and Brian and IT for making all of this possible, as well as Helen and personnel and my great OptiLink installer. Don't you deserve the star treatment? Sign up with OptiLink today. With OptiLink, I'm the star. When the
Just a place to eat. Enjoy community, tradition, and unbeatable homestyle cooking at the Oakwood Cafe, located in historic downtown Dalton. Our food, fair prices, and friendly staff have made the Oakwood Cafe one of the fastest growing businesses in Georgia. We offer catering services that can bring our distinctive flavor anywhere. We also provide the opportunity to team up with us through franchising. Whether you're a newcomer or a regular, stop by and have the dining experience you've needed. Come feel at home with us at the Oakwood Cafe. Welcome back to Catamount Football. And, Coach, let's talk a little bit about we're getting ready to uh, uh, move into a phase with our young guys uh, yeah. where we're going to play about five or six JV games right in a row. Right. Uh, so talk about the JV program and, and, and maybe even more importantly the JV philosophy, what we're looking to accomplish with these young fellows. Well, our, our, our goal, very simple, for our sub, what we call it, the, the, the GHSA calls it your sub-varsity. And you can do whatever you want to with it. We, we're, we're committed to having a freshman team and then having a junior varsity team. Uh, our goal every year is to try to have 40 freshmen. If we can have 40 freshmen at the end of, the, you know, at the end of that four years, you know you're going to have people that move. You're going to have people that just realize this is not for them. You know, we want to try to retain 30 of those 40. For the last couple of years, we've been pretty close to that. Um, so we're right there beginning to build, the, you know, keep our numbers uh, on, a, on, a, on at least steady. And then when you have 40, you can really maintain a, 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 an independent team. Um, our freshman team uh, has its own set of coaches, which do coach varsity positions. But when we get into practice after our what we call fundamentals or after our group period time, then they'll separate off and they'll actually go have a portion of practice is their own practice where they're working together in units, they're working on their plays, they're working on their defensive schemes. Sometimes when we have kind of some advanced footage or, or we, we have some advanced knowledge of a team that they're playing, then therefore they might even have a, a practice that's a little bit structured like our varsity practice. Then at a point, they will then come back into our varsity practice. And those guys, that's touch on Steve Sparks, Pete Wilson, Rich that's Pollard, right. uh, Cole Bennett works with them some. So, that's right. So we've got four three to four guys that are, that are with them at, at their game. And basically what that is, that's a, that's a line coach and a skilled coach on both sides of the ball with Steve Sparks being the head coach. Uh, then, and then the great thing about that is, is you're able to really give them some individualized attention and we're able to kind of take them and, and kind of walk them through those baby steps that they need. Now, the goal of our program is very simple. We want as many people to play as much football as early as possible. I mean, that's, we say that to these kids, we say it to the parents, we say it within our own meetings. We want as many kids playing as much football as early as possible. So what we do is the first four or five games of the sub-varsity season are dedicated to freshmen only because we're still trying to find some of those varsity players. And then what happens this year, we've kind of made a decision as a region that what we would do is go back to the sub-varsity schedule of our JV, which is made up of our, our, some of our fresh, some of the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. And uh, now what we do is we'll play on Thursday the team that we're playing on Friday. Right. But you, uh, you alternate locations. So if it's a Friday away game, let's just say it's a Friday away game at, uh, you know, at Lafette, then we're playing on Thursday, Lafette's JV here. So that, we're going back to that's kind of the way we were when we were. Right. You had a Lafette week and a Chattooga week and all that. So we're, we've kind of gone back to that. The second thing, though, about that JV schedule is now some of those freshmen have now progressed to where they're now ready to play on junior varsity. At that point, they kind of begin to, you know, at this point of the season, they'll begin to kind of morph into our special teams. They'll morph into our, var, our, our junior varsity. And they'll begin to play more of a role in that. And I said special teams, our scout teams. And we'll begin to now watch that development. And now our goal is to take some of these JV players, and we want to see can they be ready by the sixth or seventh or eighth game to step up and help us on the varsity level. So we're just constantly trying to develop these young players and move them into the next level. And the way we do our junior varsity is that we have all of our varsity coaches will coach on our junior varsity on a rotating schedule. That way they get an opportunity to coach the kids that are at their position and give a look to other positions that maybe it brings a fresh set of eyes. And call plays. Which, and call plays. Which, that's my right. inner play caller. That's right. Your inner play caller gets to come out. That's exactly right. I, I think one of the things with the JV guys, and, and, and it's, it's uh, very beneficial 
to for, for them to play, just get the snaps and play. I mean, sure. they can be in practice and, and do all the scrimmaging and all that they want, but lining up and playing against somebody in, in a different color jersey is no really doubt. beneficial to those kids, isn't it? There's, there's, I don't think you can ever – you, you know, you can scrim. We scrimmage. I, I know we scrimmage more than probably any team, any varsity team. I and mean, we talk. We go to these coaching clinics, and we talk across the state, and we talk to all these coaches. We do more one on one than probably any team. The reality is, though, you only get better in certain parts of your game when you go play somebody in a different jersey. When you don't know how that player is going to react, you don't know whether they're slanting or they're pinching or whether they're coming upfield. You don't know whether you got to base block them or you got to make a check and block down. So, you know, with that being the case, I don't think there's any substitute for letting these guys play. And at the end of the day, you know, it's a long time ago, Bill, but we were players. The payment for work is you won't play day. That's right. And, and that the, ultimately the is to is get the, there. The easy part, the hard work comes during the week in practice. That's so right. When you get a chance to line up and go play, that you know those guys need to have fun and get out there and enjoy and, it. And I think you, bro, one last part of that I think is very important. You said that about coaches getting the opportunity to call plays like that. You know, we want to develop coaches as well. Right. So I think this is a great opportunity for coaches to go down and coach through scenarios and situations, make their own on-field adjustments and make their own halftime adjustments. And that just helps us as a team on Friday night because now when you come in, it's not one coach making an adjustment. It's three or four or five coaches, and they bring their own experience, whether it's here at Dalton from where they came from before they came to Dalton or something they've even seen in the, in the junior varsity game. That's right. So. And, and if you want to see – where the freshman and JV schedule is, go to daltonfootball.com. That's correct. Click on schedules. All the schedules are laid out there so you can see when and where those sub-varsity teams are playing, whether it's freshman or sophomore. And, and I would caveat that. Be sure you check right before the game, <laughs> yes. literally, because what people don't realize, unlike the varsity schedule that has to be registered with the state and right. they have to catalog it, that's not the case with junior varsity, and it's happened to us time and time again. We could be playing. I mean, one year we're getting ready to play Heritage. I was here. You were here. That's right. Well, there's fans here. Heritage had to cancel the right. game because the the day before their starting quarterback had been injured, separated his shoulder, and they didn't have anybody else. So the right. junior varsity quarterback, well, tailback, that's what it was, junior varsity tailback, had to be the starting quarterback. So with that being the case, just be sure you check a couple of days before and be sure that uh, uh, the game is still on. Generally, it's on. It just might be moved, you know, in time or something like that to accommodate – in fact, Cartersville game this week, this Thursday, is going to be at 6 o'clock. It was really scheduled for Monday, but they've got homecoming activities this week. And sometimes us coaches get, uh, you know, get, get uh, uh, told what to do by homecoming float That's committees right. and people like that. So with that being the case, we've had to kind of move uh, our, our game to accommodate that. So 6 o'clock Thursday at Cartersville Junior Varsity game this week. Absolutely. Come out and support those young fellows. You'll see them uh, on future Friday nights. Stay right here back with more Catamount Football in just a minute. we got a hit. Ah, here comes dinner! <laughs> I'm not eating that. There's no place like Outback for our perfectly grilled shrimp and new royal port catch. I can't believe you guys didn't catch anything. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players. Featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Honesty. Integrity and hard work, leadership, quality, and value. Just a few words to describe the company and people that make up Shaw Industries. Shaw Industries, the world's leading carpet manufacturer, is proud to be a sponsor of Dalton Catamount Football. Shaw Industries, where great floors begin. We're back on Catamount Football, and we've got the highlights from the first half of last Friday night. Well, it was certainly a, uh, a nice night for football and, and a great 
run through sign there for for senior night. Yeah, a- outstanding, outstanding. Whoever does that does an outstanding job, and and of course they're recognizing the band and the cheerleaders there on the sides of the sign. And the guys came out well. I, I I felt like we had a good pregame, and 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 I know that the kids were excited. We start off with a little tendency that we had read. We knew pretty much they like to start out on the first play with some sort of bootleg or a waggle, and Coach Carmen did a good job of blitz right into it. They come back and throw just a little quick hitch, and uh, Ethan Fromm comes up and makes a great tackle. Ethan's good, one good of our form seniors. Tackle too. Nice. Absolutely, run, shoot, run shoot his legs. Arms, run That's legs. right. Just right here, you see right there, we just had a little push and they created a little seam, and uh, they did a good job of just getting right up in the middle of that seam. Come to the toss sweep, uh, pretty good push out there. Pick up a few yards. Kelvis ran hard uh, all game, but ended up having to punt three and out on the first possession. Good solid night punting and good solid night on special teams. Uh, our snapper, Brandon Sane, I mean Grant Sane, you'll see later on, does an outstanding job. Good job right here inside by, by Jordan Keener. Jordan is really playing good football. You see him hustling down the line. Great job of Edder coming up here and, uh, and, 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 and put, setting the corner for us. Good pursuit down the line of scrimmage. I mean, this is the way you draw it up. You get any kind of side motion, you start just moving down the line of scrimmage. You know, we've got a lot of kids that are playing a lot of minutes on the defense right now. Very, very happy with the way they're playing. Uh, you know, there's some. We want to get that shut out, and it's out there somewhere. But uh, these guys are, are getting a lot of minutes right now. Good job of Elijah Stidwell. He had, Elijah had a solid game as well. Uh, this is a little style kicking. We're going to see a little bit of that semi-soccer style where they kind of everybody adjusts it. This is a new thing we're doing this year is, is with the seats and the you know, chairs and getting those guys separated. Coming out, just a quick slant to Brandon Dale. Uh, good throw and catch, good protection. Picks up about five or six yards. End up again, though, punting the ball away. Good blitz right here, right up the middle. Good job of, of uh, Jay Rockholt. Uh, once again, our thoughts and, and prayers go out to the Rockholt family on the loss of, uh, on loss of Mr. Rockholt, the grandfather. Uh, he would he'd been to the funeral that day and came out. I, just a, a great effort out of him that day and uh, played hard. Good job right here uh, of, uh, of getting up the field. Uh, and then uh, this is kind of one of the things that we told the kids. This is their best pass play. Just chunk it up because they got guys that can junk, jump up and get it. Uh, this right here, as you could tell, was a, a bit delay of in the game. Yeah, yeah they, they thought it was a tack on penalty, but it, but it wasn't. So they come back and just run on the very, for very first play, just a little midline, which is a play that has had success against us this year. Uh, but they had a different blocking scheme for it, fundamentally the same play. Comes a counter. Kelvis picks up four or five yards. Just re- really struggling to get things going. Trap play there, and, and uh, Hunter Cleary uh, runs in the back of Juan Pacheco, getting on the linebacker, and, and just, just fumbles the ball. and uh, Get a good break here, though, with a high snap. And, and uh, ends up in, in a uh, lost uh, yard play uh, sack. Quarterback drops back, and now he's rolling out. A good coverage downfield. Guys are getting after him. See yeah. Chase Todd giving a good, great effort chasing the quarterback. Unbelievable. And, it, and it, once again, this is their M.O. Scramble around, throw the ball deep. Just a little lead play with, with uh, Kelvis Rhodes. Nice block downfield there by a couple of the receivers. And Kelvis picks up about 30, 40 yards right there. One of our probably our biggest play of the night. Yeah, that was a Chip. Kelvis ran hard. You see a great job of Hunter Clear right here on the linebacker. Great yeah. job. Good blocking up front, <laughs> left side. Hayden Gross and Jake Roberts did a nice job there at the point of attack. Good open field tackle there. Come back just the the trap <clears throat> trap again and and uh, pops right up the middle for about seven or eight yards. It felt like we had a good drive going here. Absolutely had some good things going. Kelvis runs through an arm tackle and. Hits another long run. Uh, so we get the ball down to about the 15, 16 yard line. Uh, at this point, I think it's 14 to 14 to nothing. And, yeah. and really felt like, okay, if we can get a score here, um, you know, we, we've got a, got a chance to kind of stop the, stop the momentum and stop the flow of this game <coughs> and, and turn it around. Uh, and then unfortunately, uh, we wind up with a turnover in the end zone uh, that kind of ended this possession. But here comes a toss sweep again. Got some backside run through by a linebacker there that, that uh, slowed that play down. And then there's a, a pick in the end zone that kind of ends that drive. So they put the ball back on to a quarterback, keeps it, come back and comes back and runs the same play, just with a different blocking scheme, another midline. But now they run it a different way, had a different blocking scheme there for it. 
Uh, our guy read that and, and, and basically vacated that area, and basically they just filled right back where it was. So they come back, kick off. Brandon Dale receives our, our, our uh, kickoff, did a good job of getting a return. You know, we want to be out beyond the 35 as many times as we can. Comes a counter with Kelvis running hard up through the middle. Picks up about 10, 12 yards. He had a decent night rushing the ball. We just could not finish any drives yep. on, on offense. Yep. Get a good punt right here. Touches him, and, uh, you know, once again, he commits one of the rules that we talk about. Don't touch the ball if it's inside the 10. Uh, good job once again. Ethan Fromm right here uh, just hanging on, making a tackle. Uriel Perez had a solid game. Uriel's a sophomore. We're developing on our inside, on our inside and he had a really, really good game. Uh, just a little out there to, to Brandon Painter, not good throwing catch, good protection up front, and pick up about 10, 12 yards. And so we go to halftime, 21 nothing, and uh, try to make a few changes and come out and play a little better in the second half. Absolutely, absolutely. So right here, back with the second half highlights in this year. Got car problems? That's no problem for AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. Bring your foreigner domestic vehicle into AAA Transformers and have our certified master technicians perform the most comprehensive diagnostics over any other shop. AAA Transformers utilizes the latest technology, so you can rest assured that you get the proper diagnosis the first time, so only necessary repairs are made. Save time and money on all your brake, AC, tune-up, and transmission needs, all backed by the best warranty in the business. That's AAA Transformers Transmission Specialists. When is the last time you have compared your car, life, or health insurance costs? At Advanced Insurance Strategies, we know your time is valuable. Therefore, we have developed AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. You can now go online anytime, anywhere, and get quick and easy quotes for your car, life, or health insurance from respected companies such as Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia, Assurant Health, Alliant Health Plans, and Drive Insurance from Progressive. Receive unparalleled customer service from a local insurance agency while using AdvancedInsuranceStrategies.com. AstroTurf is grateful to have been a part of this community over the last 40 years. And as Whitfield County has grown, AstroTurf has grown to be the leader worldwide in synthetic sports surfaces. Our assistance with the area parks and the new AstroTurf arena will hopefully show the community our appreciation. Soft, safe, and the most durable technology available today, AstroTurf, it's the new generation. This is not your father's AstroTurf. All right, we're back on Catamount Football and Coach Land. Second half highlights coming up. Really felt like, you know, down 21 nothing. We were still very much in this ball game. Absolutely, because we had moved the ball. It's kind of like you said. We moved the ball. We just couldn't, we couldn't punch it in. We couldn't finish some of our drives. Good job of our defense. Our defense came out strong, and, and, and we made a few adjustments on the inside, and uh, they come back, and they'd been sitting on this play. We knew that play was out there. Uh, it's a matter of execution, and uh, it's just a good job of, of us – uh, recognizing the play, but just recognizing it a little bit too late. There's Calvis running hard. <clears throat> just don't have it. We just don't have enough people downfield on some of these. It, it, you see, you see him getting hit three or four times right down here. We've got to do a better job with our receivers and our backside linemen getting downfield and picking off some of those defensive backs or those backside linebackers. Blocking uh, at that next uh, level. There comes a draw play uh, with Marvin. Marvin does a nice job of, of popping the draw there and, and gives us about a 20-yard gain. They're, they're trying to take a, uh, a little bit of advantage of their aggressive nature on their defense, rushing up field hard. And yep. See B.J. out in front, trying to get it's a hit on the linebacker there. Great job. Good run. Marvin's a guy that works hard for us during practice, a senior. we got a couple of those guys. That Once again, we've got a punt. And Good job right here of Brent, uh, Grant Sane going down. You know, Grant gives us a great – Grant's just our snapper, but he gives us a great effort in everything that he does. He's, he's a leader on the field as well. Good job right here of, uh, of our defense stuff, and it right here is a, a play we're going to see a lot of this week. 
It's that old jet sweep coming out of that, what we call gangster, or that double wing Georgia Southern look. Good job there of, of Ethan Marlowe making the play and just working down the line of scrimmage using his hands. Good job right there. Good job, Robert Hardaway. Yeah, Ethan and Robert did a nice job stuffing that thing. Ethan had one of his better games. I, I was glad that, that uh, he, 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 this was a team that set up well for him and the way that he plays his playing style. Good job of Vetter there. You, you know you're going to get your best out of Vetter every play. Ball gets moved down to the goal line. Good pursuit by here by Rocco. Does a great job. So we end the third quarter. You know, we're down 28 to nothing. And, we, you know, we're, there's still fight. You know, I, I really felt like the coaches were still, we're still making adjustments. The players are still working. And uh, we come back, and, and this is one of those plays you just can't have. You just can't have. And that was basically that one right there. That made, that made us have to become something that we're not. Great job right here, though, of Hayden Gross and, yep. and, uh, and B.J. Rowland getting out front. A little screen pass and run the, run the uh, trap there to Hunter Cleary and picks up five or six yards. And they One of those Mike down. Dyer plays. Right. Here's a, a long throw to, to uh, Brandon Dale, gets behind the corner and, and then makes it, uh, breaks a couple of tackles and ends up going for about a 50, 60-yard touchdown, uh, which wound up, unfortunately, being our only touchdown of the night. Um, right. good, but good protection, good throw and catch, uh, and then a nice job of running after after the reception uh, and making making a couple breaking a couple of tackles and getting the ball in the end zone. Absolutely, absolutely. Just like they had that a little earlier in the game. Yeah, and Daniel off. Palacios came in and kicked for us this week. Uh, Kiko's been battling a little uh, thing that's going on in his foot, and uh, Daniel Palacios is one of our seniors and did an outstanding job. Good kick right down about the two-yard <laughs> two line and get good coverage and, and get them on about the 12. So that's a great kick and great coverage by our kick team. That's right. Good job right here once again of, of Euro Perez. You'll see him working down the line of scrimmage, forcing him outside into Robert and, uh, and into, uh, and into Rock Holt. Great job right here, Robert. You know, Robert's a guy who's got that motor going full speed every time. They'd, at this point, they had moved into a little bit of a uh, uh, more of a, a run, obviously, uh, oriented offense, and uh, we get the ball back on downs. Rollout pass. Uh, Cole does a nice job pulling it down, getting out of bounds, picking up a first down right there, I think, on that, on that play. Again, now we're just trying to throw the ball just about every down, just trying to make something happen quickly. Uh, they had good coverage, but he does a nice job of pulling it down and picking up a, uh, picking up another first down. About a 30, about a 20, 25 yard run there by Cole. Mm -hmm. And that's the way the game ended, unfortunately. 30, yep. 35 to seven, but uh, great thing about it is we got another game this week. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll be back. Wood, 299. Wood, 159, set, Mike Jones here and you better blitz to Carpet Express. We have three quarter inch hardwood for $2.99 a square foot. We have engineered wood for $1.59 a square foot. And to help you reach your goal to put wood in your home, Carpet Express is offering a 25 cent a square foot rebate. So rush into Carpet Express while supplies last because everybody's out to get their quarterback. Have you ever heard the term, your eyes are your expressions, the windows to your soul? But when your eyelids look tired and they start to sag, it will make you look much older than you actually are. There is a simple surgical procedure called a blepharoplasty or eyelid tuck, which can help to rejuvenate and redefine the contours around your eyelids. It will even improve your fields of vision and a portion may even be covered by insurance. We can help redefine how others see you. No, I'm not at home today. No, now I can have all of my phone calls forwarded and do all kinds of cool things now that I've signed up with OptiLink. You're the star with OptiLink from Dalton Utilities. Local customer service, lightning fast internet, stellar phone and television at affordable rates. I'd like to thank my mom and my friend Cassie and the phone guy from OptiLink. Don't you deserve the star treatment? Sign up with OptiLink today. With OptiLink, I'm the star.
Back to Catamount football, and Coach, we've got the scouting report segment where we talk about the Ridgeland Panthers, and, and these guys are probably, uh, without a doubt, the most physically gifted team uh, that, that, we'll, we'll see, that we've seen so far and, and that we may see this year. No, no. I mean, they have a bunch of college players, right? Well, th yes, and they, are, <clears throat> they have um, nestled themselves over the last four or five years into a, a, a program, into an area that has had four or five or six D1 players on their team each year. Right. This is this year will be no exception. They had about four players move in early in the year from uh, I think the two or three from Notre Dame. You mm -hmm. and I sat behind their right. their parents and had an interesting game. Yeah. Yeah, had an interesting conversation with them about that. But yeah, you know, the reality is they're a very very good football team. Uh, they're very gifted athletically. Uh, I think they're worthy of all the preseason hype that they got. This one particular player, Von Bell. Uh, the free safety. He's more than, than, than worthy of the amount of respect and stars and all that stuff. I was say, if you're on. a recruiting junkie, go on there. He's on. He's being offered oh. by, from I guess, from Ohio State, Alabama, right USC, down the line. USC, I you name saw it. they, yeah, yeah, they right, came right in. Down the line. And so he's, yes, he, he represents their players. He's definitely the leader of the team. Um, the other side of that, though, is I know Coach Mariakis, and they're very well coached. And uh, they've, uh, you know, the thing that they do well is that they get their athletes in space and kind of similar to the way South Georgia football used to be about 15 or 20 years ago. You know, it wasn't really, they knew that they couldn't beat a lot of the North Georgia teams, particularly those years, Parkview, Brookwood, some of those years where, you know, you got Jeff Frank Cure. And what they did was they said, okay, we can't beat you 11 on 11. So what we're going to do is, is run an offense that basically neutralizes, you know, eight of our guys and eight of your guys and we're going to put our best three on your best three, and you play three on three. They're going to do that same thing. They're going to try to isolate our defense. They're going to isolate our corners. They're going to try to work to the edges. And the minute that you go outside to stop the speed, to stop the jet speed, to stop all the rushing, then they're going to come back and hurt you inside with the trap. And they, and they do it out of the <laughs> – I think the thing that's interesting about them is they do it out of the wing T look, which, you know, traditionally you, you don't, you'd think maybe, well, okay, these guys are going to be a spread team. But yep. they use those wing T principles to really get themselves on the edge, like you're saying, and take advantage of that speed with, a, with all the sideways motion. Absolutely. And then they also have the benefit of the ball faking, too, that goes along with the wing T. That, you bring up a great point, and, and I, I think there's one point there that you said that I want to kind of dwell on, which is this. It's not the offense that makes the team. It's, mm. the, it's the player <laughs> it's, that makes the offense yeah. that makes the team. And this will be, be a game because you would think – you know, the common conversation that we all have at the water cooler is you got 10 athletes, my gosh, you got to run a spread offense so you can get on the ball and all that space. That's not true. This is a wing T formation that they use basically two wings and a fullback and only one receiver. Now, sometimes the fullback's down, sometimes the fullback's up, but at the end of the day, it, there, it's distribution. It's just distributing it on old time football where basically you're blocking down and kicking out. They do very few uh, you know, base blocks. Everything is either, like I said, block down, kick out, fold with the tight end or the wing underneath and run the lead, or it's just zone blocking. And they're good enough athletes, and you and I have had this discussion before, zone blocking is, is really more talent, skill based than it really is a scheme. And uh, they have the kids to do that. Now, they're like everybody else. They're going to play three or four or five kids both ways. So then when those other kids come in as their replacements, as a, as a coach, you know that, that's kind of the moment that you've got to take advantage sometimes of, of, of situations because they tend to get a little more predictable then. But when they've got all those players on the field at the same time, it makes it tough because of the ball handling. They're faking the trap. They can give the, jet, uh, they can give the buck sweep. They can you know, hand off on the jet sweep, or they can fake the jet sweep and give it to the trap. So it makes it very difficult to play a defense, I mean, play an offense like this. And then at the end of the day, they got a great passing game because they got two guys that can just run down there and they're going to dump 20 feet in the air, just throw it up, and they can get it. So it, it, we're going to have to read our keys. We're going to have to be very involved. Their kicking game is what I'd say is, is just a good high school kicking game. Uh, they're going to be able to place the ball on their punting. They're going to be able to place the ball on their kicking. And they can kick a field goal from a, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about the 25, 26 yard line in. So offensively, I, I think you kind of understand how we have to approach them. Yeah, yeah they, they've changed their they've changed their philosophy a little bit. They used to be a four man front team, and now they've they've become a, a, a three man front, kind of a three five look. Um, and and they again they, they've got the athletes. It doesn't matter where they line up. 
uh, if they're a four-man front or a three-man front, sure. um, they've got the guys that can play. And they've mm -hmm. got a couple of big linebackers. They've got Von Bell that's a shutdown safety. Yeah, uh, you don't you don't hear people say that. Twenty two but, tackles against yeah, us last year. But, but I mean, he really he yeah. makes a lot of tackles. Amazing. He also controls half the field. Uh, you, we saw him play Calhoun live, and it was very evident that if they were throwing away from him, I mean, you're just not going to throw the yeah. football in, in yeah. his direction where he's lined up. And uh, so there's a lot of challenges defensively. We're seeing more of those three five front teams, those odd front teams, and we, we under our kids understand how to block it and what to do. It's just a matter of going out and getting after them and, and executing it. Yeah, and a guy like Vaughn, you don't really throw away from him, do you? You have to give him a little something to get him right. to go to the other the other direction yes. before you, because he's quick enough to get to either side. He really is. They play him right in the middle of the field, um, and and just a true center fielder, and and he he does a great job of supporting the run, but he also does a great job of getting after after the passer. So it, it's going to be a real challenge, I think, for, for us, and and it should be a lot of fun for the for oh, us so. as coaches and. And for the players to get prepared for the, for this game, I, I think these are the kind of, kind of games you want to be in, and these no are doubt. the kind of time, no these doubt. are the kind of teams that we want to play. That's good. That's good. So stay right here. We'll be back with more Catamount football in just a minute. A restaurant should be more than just a place to eat. Enjoy community, tradition, and unbeatable home-style cooking at the Oakwood Cafe, located in historic downtown Dalton. Our food, fair prices, and friendly staff have made the Oakwood Cafe one of the fastest-growing businesses in Georgia. We offer catering services that can bring our distinctive flavor anywhere. We also provide the opportunity to team up with us through franchising. Whether you're a newcomer or a regular, stop by and have the dining experience you've needed. Come feel at home with us at the Oakwood Cafe. We got a hit. Ah, here comes dinner. <laughs> I'm not eating that. There's no place like Outback for our perfectly grilled shrimp and new royal port catch. I can't believe you guys didn't catch anything. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players, featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Honesty, integrity, and hard work, leadership, quality, and value. Just a few words to describe the company and people that make up Shaw Industries. Shaw Industries, the world's leading carpet manufacturer, is proud to be a sponsor of Dalton Catamount football. Shaw Industries, where great floors begin. Back on Catamount Football with the last segment here. Going to close up the show, do a little housekeeping uh, on mm -hmm. last week and, and, and a little uh, going forward. But you know, one thing don't want to certainly uh, not mention is, is the support of our fans, quarterback club, no uh, the students, you know, the folks that come out and, and make Friday night special for our kids, right? Well, yeah, and uh, you know, that's one of the most unique parts of, of Dalton High football is our support. And we don't have to, to go very far to be reminded. Every home game, we can look across in those visitor stands and, and we see what kind of support most of our schools, even some of our local schools, get in comparison to what we get. And uh, I want to thank our fans uh, on behalf of our team uh, for, for just continuing to, to show up and support the Cats year after year after year. And, uh, you know, this, that's one of the things, like I said, that makes this program unique, makes that Dalton D unique, uh, is it's, it's a trademark sign. It's recognized. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a week where we're going to need to have a lot of support this week. We're going into a, um, a very uh, a hostile environment, you know, to, to, uh, to say up at Ridgeland. And uh, I'm just excited for how well I'm sure our kids are going to play and the coach is going to coach and the band's going to play and parents are going to cheer. And, and, you know, this is going to be a, a, a – this is one of those first tests on the road because now we're into that sub-region schedule. Now all the marbles count. Now we've got to be sure that as we, we go week by week, we don't overlook an opponent. We don't let a loss cost us twice. 
you know, we got a flush this week, and we're going to move forward now. We'll have a great attitude going this week. We'll have a great week of practice, and we'll be ready to play Friday night. This is really a, a five-game <coughs> season coming up with That's five, right. five sub region games that determine where you, you fit in the play-in game That's between right. the season. So, so each step is, is going to be important in these Very next critical. five weeks, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can't – I think the danger uh, – one of the reporters asked me Friday night, were we, were we looking forward, were we not ready for, for this week because we were looking forward? No. We, I, I, I didn't sense that all week. But now I, I feel like that becomes more of a threat because you do begin to look forward knowing that this game is important and that game's important and that game's important and you're playing there. So, yeah, this, this, right now is when the focus has got to really become just, just – Radar, and we've got to begin to look at that week's opponent, and we've, we we concentrate, and and you know what, week two we'll play week two, and week three we'll play week three. But right now, week one we got the Ridgeland Panthers, and that's who we're going to be ready to play. Absolutely, I think I think the message for our fans and 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 parents and players is it, it needs to build up each week. Each Absolutely, week, each week is a step. And, Absolutely, and we take those proper steps. At the end of the line, we're going to be sitting right where we want to no be. No doubt. Somebody made the comment, said, "Coach, you know, have you th- do you think you played your best football?" And I was like, "When?" You know. So <laughs> you know, and and the answer to that would be, I hope we don't play our best football. Right. I want us to improve every week, and I think we can look at our film and see areas that we have improved. Now it's time for us to improve all the way across the board and just be ready to each week play better this week than we did last week, regardless of the opponent. I don't think the opponent at this point matters. It's are we playing our best every week. And I, that, that's going to be, I know, our pursuit as coaches is getting our team to be prepared and to play the best of their ability each Friday night. Absolutely. And, and we'll um, just remind everybody, come out Thursday, watch the, the young Catamounts play against Cartersville, and then, of course, Friday night up at Ridgeland, support the Catamounts. And we'll close out the show like we always do. So we'll be back next week, same cat time, same cat channel.